Hello everyone and welcome to another dynamic episode on Bot Talk. I'm your host Medina Ibrahim and I'm joined with two guests, Moshtak and Louisa. Today we will be discussing how young people's mental health has been impacted by lockdown and COVID-19. Guys, how do you guys feel that you found the whole experience of a pandemic and COVID? So I'll start. So personally, I found the experience quite eye-opening because it kind of showed me how fast life goes. And the fact that life's going so fast, we realised that we could not really waste much time. And um, because obviously we're young people and our lives are mobile, so we have to figure out ways to build our future whereas people who tend to be older their lives might be more stable so at the end of the day because of the fact that covid well our lives are put to a stop and mm-hmm. i think as we're growing more it just kind of like makes us realize that we need to actually focus more on our future and stuff like that yeah Louisa, how have you found it um well it was very scary to be honest um but like it made me realize how much like people meant to me and like how they yeah (laughs) yeah I think I had a very similar experience to both of you I feel like it's very eye-opening as Mushtaq said because you realize how and the stuff that you take for granted like going to school and seeing your family and being able to go outside you can't do that anymore and it just makes you think a lot and it stimulates you as well Mm -hmm. how do you guys feel like you've been impacted by this like your well-being, especially during lockdown? Well, I kind of thought, like, a positive... Like, I always like to think of it as, like, a positive thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, like, it made me focus, like, more on my work Mm -hmm. and, like, made me realise how much relationships, like, meant to me and, like, basically not taking it for granted to, like, see my nan every day and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with me, the first lockdown was eye-opening, but the third lockdown, so the one where we had to do school online, was really Mm -hmm. stressful because you're online, you're at home, you're looking at a screen all day, especially like if you're on your phone and if you're on the laptop. So you go to school on your laptop and then you go on your phone straight after school. So either way, it's just like, it doesn't feel healthy. Like You don't feel like yourself at all with the situation and stuff. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. I feel like to me... I I couldn't distinguish school and home. Yeah. We were doing school at home. So it was like you couldn't switch your brain off and relax. Mm-hmm. Actually exactly. do things like with your family and stuff like that. There was no there was no sense of like relaxation in that yeah. particular thing. Because you'd wake up, you go to school and then you're at home and you just like, where's my rest time? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I feel like it affected me negatively as well because you you think that because you're at home you, you're more um you're less stressed but I feel like because of the situation everyone was 100% more stressed because on the news you're always seeing the death toll rising mm-hmm. and people not doing as well and the stuff like that so how do you guys feel like seeing that the media constantly talking about it affected you um well it definitely was like very scary there was like a point where I had to like switch off notifications on my phone because like it kept coming through and like I just get like really worried about it and like I wouldn't be able to focus and like I I was always like worried about my nan and like because my mom's a key worker as well like I was I was worried about her going to work and everything Yeah. yeah I think for me it was um It was very scary because you'd realise how short life is, especially if it's a global pandemic and people all over the world are dying and you just, like, don't know which one. Like, it sounds so negative, but you don't know which one of your family is next. Like, it's never Mm -hmm. unsure, like, who's going to actually get COVID. And when you go shopping and when you go out, it's still scary regardless as well. Yeah, 100%. Is there anything you would tell your past self, like, two years ago, like, 2019, you? What would you tell yourself, like, to help you with this whole situation? Like, to make sure you didn't get negatively impacted? Um, definitely would be to, like, make sure you kept in contact with everyone and, like, try not to isolate yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. I've because like I felt like I was kind of very isolated without like phoning people and I just mainly tried to concentrate on my work 
Yeah. But like, mm-hmm. I think if I would have kept um, contact with everyone, then maybe like, I don't know, it would have like lifted my spirits more. Mm. Mm. Well, for me, for my past self, I'd say try work hard towards your future because obviously I'm in college now. And in a year, in, le- in less than two years later, I'll be in university. And because of COVID, I didn't necessarily have time to actually research and look at stuff to see where my future would take me. So it's kind of stressful, like life has stopped, but you need to carry on regardless of the situation and stuff like that. Because yeah. life is still going to go on straight after COVID, you know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think I'd tell myself... Um, to definitely focus more on studies because I used to just switch the laptop on and just go on my phone and not really focus yeah. on as much as I should have been. Especially since it was, um, obviously, I'm in year 12 and a lot of things happening in year 12. I mean, year 13 will be far more worse. Mm-hmm. So I think I should have told myself that as well as I think I should have gone outside more, like go on walks and stuff like that. Because once I looked down, finished, and I went back into school and traveling and all that stuff I felt like I was really nervous and scared I don't know why I think that's just like mentally because you've been stuck in a house for like a year mm-hmm. it's like it takes a toll on you yeah especially because you don't feel good as well if you're at home all day like there's no pressure or everything anything especially if like you're open and that's the only pressure I got you know <laughs> what I mean it just it wasn't great yeah how would you what would you guys do to help raise awareness about mental health especially in young people I wish that you can start okay so because of the age of because we live in an age of social media i think we should leverage it and use it to our advantage so we need to tell people that it's okay not to be okay and yeah. because of the fact that COVID has affected many of our young people's mental health, it kind of is like, you need to tell people how you feel. Like, don't isolate yourself, like Louisa just said, and yeah. kind of tell people how you feel. And don't ever think that because your experience seems a little a minuscule thing to someone else's life, that you shouldn't tell anyone your feelings. Because at the end of the day, it's your life and you matter in your own life. You know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Louisa, how what would you do? Um, I totally agree. I think, like, we could raise it on um, social media, but I think that, like, mainly in schools as well, like, teachers should be, like, trained to, Mm -hmm. like, help deal with that because, like, I have, like, a lot of panic attacks at school and that, and some teachers just don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, they Um, just tell you just breathe. It's not great. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And... um, I think if people like understand it a bit more then maybe like they can help you there and then and like make sure there's always someone there that you can talk to and yeah. like not be scared to talk to them. Mm-hmm. I agree with Louisa. I, I, I have a lot of panic attacks in school, especially with like exam stress. And I feel like COVID hasn't helped with that because I feel like I'm even more less prepared to do mm-hmm. exams. This week I had exams and but there's nothing the school can do unless I feel like they should be putting things in place to help the students understand and control the way they feel and stuff like that. Yeah. And realize what triggers them to feel that way and how to not feel that way. I think that would help. Um, but I also think with the social media point, if we, um, for me personally, I had to take multiple breaks from social media. As we just said, like turning off your notifications because it mm-hmm. does get a lot. So I feel like social media breaks is also as, as important as raising the topic on of mental health on social media as well. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I feel like in school, they mainly focus on, hey, we're opening school, everyone come to school. They didn't really think of the fact that a lot of the kids' mental health would be bad, especially like I moved from secondary school to a sixth form. And now you just feel like there's no one you can talk to because you've not really had that support network in that new school and that new place that you've moved into. So it doesn't really make, it's not really good that you've moved into a new environment and you're struggling with um, schoolwork, but you have no one to talk to about it as well. Yeah, yeah. But I have noticed that there are some schools that have, like, I know my sixth form, the first week of school, you had to go into form because normally you don't mm-hmm. have to go unless you have a lesson but you had to and they were doing stuff to make open discussions about mental health so yeah. i feel like that was made nationwide and students felt like they could talk mm-hmm. to their school about it it would make yeah. them 
feel better. Louise, what did your school do like um, to help students? Pardon, sorry. What, school, what did your school do at the beginning after lockdown to help students? Um, well, they kind of like eased it all like back in. So like doing separate times and like, so people felt a little bit more relaxed and not, yeah. And they also did during lockdown, which I thought was very good, um, that they did this like Monday mindfulness thing yeah. where you can like join this. I think you can join like this video call and um, they basically just go through like techniques and just like to calm yourself down. And so like you wouldn't feel like overwhelmed and stressed with everything, which I thought was like amazing because yeah. I don't think many schools like do that um but yeah and they always, always kept mentioning like the safeguarding team and like you can always go to them to speak to them and like basically that everyone was there for each other yeah yeah I think I spe- not a lot of schools do that I know my sister's school she didn't have primary school though but she was in year six and every Wednesday they wouldn't have formal lessons but they'd be doing reading and well-being activities to help the child because especially at a younger age you don't know how to control your emotions so I think that was helpful but I think um especially my secondary school when we left year 11 they didn't do that much for us because we were stuck in this limbo of from March September what are we going to do because you start school again in September so I feel like if my sixth form didn't give me activities to be doing over that time I I feel like I would have been much worse especially in the first lockdown Mm-hmm. yeah how do you guys think teachers parents and carers can help oh so based first off i think that everyone is trying their best and they're trying to transition because at the end of the day everyone has been affected by covid and stuff mm-hmm. but i think that in like it's very important to like because of covid and how it's affected a lot of our mental health and stuff I think it's important to kind of realise that, hey, we need to address this, we need to address this issue, like, and I think it's nationally because a lot of people have been stuck at home, a lot of people haven't been doing much, so um, it's kind of important for our generation to actually kind of, kind of grow and come out of this obstacle because when I was um in when I was in primary school I was told in 2016 there'll be flying cars and stuff but I believe that our generation can bring that you know what I mean yeah. but um we just need to focus on actually bringing a better world and a better environment for all of us yeah 100% mm-hmm. Louisa how do you think they can help the young people to make things easier for them um I just think people need a more like of an understanding um and I think if we can get past that and like everybody to know that like other people do struggle even if they do look fine that they can have struggles as well um I think that yeah I think people just need to like look out for each other and just be there for each other yeah, I agree. I feel like we just need to open that conversation, not just within our generation, but intergenerations. And yeah. people talk about mental health. Like that will make everyone else understand, wait, I feel that way too, and so do you. So mm-hmm. it's not abnormal and I, it's okay to be feeling this way. But yeah. I feel like um, people, there should be definitely certain things in place, especially in schools, that can help students. Um, understand why they're feeling that way because as at the end of the day most secondary school and primary school students they're still children so they don't understand how to cope with the emotion that they feel mm-hmm. but yeah I think it's not necessarily good to dismiss it as well like mm. if you're from a background where mental health isn't really a big deal and it's and you don't like I, we live in the UK and stuff so it's very difficult for us to actually like I know with my parents I address it and it's okay but with other people it's kind of a struggle with them especially if you're from an ethnic minority group because they don't really understand that mental health is an issue and we go through different experiences than them and we don't know how to necessarily strengthen ourselves and become how we may want ourselves to be our ideal self in the future and stuff like that. 
Yeah, 100%. I think it's because a lot of cultures, they it's a taboo subject. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, like, they don't want to open that discussion because mm-hmm. it's frowned upon to feel those certain ways. Yeah. Mental health issues like depression and stuff like that. They don't like talking about it. Yeah. Getting the older generation to understand that it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Feel that way is really important. And it's not good to also compare their situations to ours because we're living in two different places. Like yeah. in the UK, it's a different experience to maybe in Africa and Asia yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, 100%. Do you guys have any final things to say about how we can educate people and create awareness about the importance of mental health? Um, well, I think... I. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I've got this, like, very good quote that, like, I've always, like, stuck by. And yeah. it was, like, in order for a glow stick to, yeah, in order for a glow stick to glow, it has to break first. Yeah. And I've kind of, I kind of always, like, stuck by that. So, like, whenever you're having a bad day, just think that it's just a bad day, not a bad life. And, yeah. like, you can still carry on and, like, it may be hard, but it will be worth it because you are you do deserve happiness yeah. and that, and that it's okay not to be okay but just try not to stay there for that long and yeah. just and just speak to people because yeah everybody wants to help and support you so just try not to bottle it all up yeah, yeah. I agree much like what do you have to say I'd say, like, I agree with Louisa, like, never, ever self-isolate yourself to... But if you need to work on yourself and stuff like that, always have a support network. Don't ever think that people aren't going to be there for you because um, because you feel like... Because you feel like no one is going to be there for you. Like, you need to know that people will always be there for you and your family, your friends and stuff, like, they'll always support you and stuff like that. And don't ever... Um, not speak about your feelings and bottle it up because it can lead to more health, like more mental health issues. Like always speak about your emotions, always put it as an output to speak about it and never avoid your stress or whatever because it's not, it's not a way to cope and stuff like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. I think having bad days is important so you know what a good day feels like. Mm-hmm. So in order to have good days, you need to have bad days as well. Yeah. So the the, you know the balance of the days and stuff like that so everyone goes through bad days but it's just how you deal with them and how you go forward mm-hmm. and try to find a good day is what's really important yeah. I guess thank you guys for joining mm-hmm. today um, we hope that everyone watching enjoyed and has learned something from the discussion today the topic of mental health among young people is really important and we hope that we've shed some light on it as well as have started important conversations please continue us to follow on youth fluent on vod talk to raise more awareness like subscribe share comment on youtube follow vod talk on instagram facebook and twitter and make sure to tell us what matters to you so we know what you would like to hear about next Until next dynamic episodes of Youth Fluent. Bye.